be applying the law of cosines to a situation where it's a SAS. You're given a side, an angle, and another side. So our, our angle A is 60 degrees, our side length B is 20, and we have some side length little c being 30. So let's call this little c 30. That means this is capital C. We don't know it yet. Let's call this capital A equaling 60 degrees. So this makes this little a, uh, which is unknown. And let's make this capital B. We don't know it yet. Making this little b 20. We will utilize the law of cosines to solve this triangle for the unknown angles here, here, and the unknown side length here. So we know that one of the laws of cosines asserts that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of capital A. Alright? So we aspire to solve for this little a. So all we got to do is square root both sides and we have it. So a is equal to the square root of this stuff. c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. Now we just have to plug those values in. B squared is 20 squared, uh, plus C squared is 30 squared, minus 2 times 20 times 30 times the cosine of 60 degrees. And when we compute that, when we plug that into our calculator, we get approximately 26.5. Okay? So, we have solved for little a, and now we have to solve for these two values. So we know little a is uh, uh, 26.5, all right? Now, we must solve for the angle, capital C, and the angle, capital B. We can utilize the law of cosines precisely to do this. Notice that one of them, to solve for b, let's say, uh, little b squared is equal to little a squared plus little c squared minus 2ac cosine of capital B. So what I want to do is I want to solve for capital B. So I'll send these two terms to the other side and divide by what's in front of capital B. So that means I get b squared minus a squared minus little c squared is equal to negative 2a little c cosine of capital B. Dividing by negative 2ac, solving for cosine of capital B, I get uh, uh, b squared minus a squared minus c squared all over negative 2ac, okay? So we got cosine of b is equal to this stuff. And then when I take the cosine inverse, I solve for b, I get b is equal to the cosine inverse of that stuff. I get b squared minus a squared minus little, uh, little c squared all over negative 2ac. That is what my angle b is. So I'll give you some time to check this out. You can pause the video and see the steps. I'll be moving on. So bam, erase some work here. And oh, okay. So then when we use our calculator and plug it in, we get B is approximately 41 degrees. All right. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, I remember during the laws of science that I had to now also check for 180 minus the angle that we got. Do we have to do this here? Actually, no. In the law of cosines, you don't have to do that. That's only in the law of sines. Okay? So, moving on, let's find that last angle. Since we know B, this is equal to 41 degrees. To kill off the problem, we know that A plus B plus C should be equal to 180. So I want to solve for B, I mean, uh, I want to solve for C, so I get C is equal to 180 minus A minus B, and we know A and B, so C is equal to 180 minus 41 minus 26.5. So this implies that our last unknown, capital C, is equal to, let's plug it into our calculator here, we get that it equals 79 degrees. And you can add 79 uh, to 20 to 26.5,
and you approximately get uh, 180. You might be 0.05 short or something like that, but that's only because we had to approximate. If we didn't approximate, it would perfectly add up to 180 degrees.